Good afternoon. My name is Aries Cooper and I am Manatee County's Youth of the Year. I am proud to be welcoming you <laughs> to the ribbon cutting of the New DeSoto Boys and Girls Club. The organization has been here for over 70 years and the DeSoto Club has been operating for over 50 years. The club has impacted the lives of many children in many more ways than one from encouraging them to participate in program, sports, and academics to helping them fill out college applications. All children need the support and many may not receive this guidance from home. So thank you for supporting us by volunteering, donating, and advocating. Thank you for supporting the Boys and Girls Club in Manatee County and youth like me. Thank you. Good afternoon, welcome friends, guests, all of our wonderful kids that are here today. I am Dawn Stanhope and I am proud to be your president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Manatee County. And this day is something that we have been dreaming of for many, many, many years. And what a wonderful gift to see it finally come to fruition and to be able to celebrate with all of you for our kids great futures. Thank you for investing in them and thank you for being here and being part of Boys and Girls Clubs of Manatee County. Now let's cut a ribbon and call this club home. It's been a long journey to get to this point. There's been discussions about rebuilding the DeSoto Club for over 10 years. In fact, there were a couple of attempts made to start raising money and they had to be put on hold for various reasons. And so a couple years ago when we were able to get the group together and really formulate the plan and work the plan and raise the money, we were able to put it all into action. And so this is a great labor of love for so many people and we're just blessed beyond measure to see it come to reality. Well, before we could go out in the community and really ask for their support, we had to go to those that are closest to the Boys and Girls Club and say, would you please come in as a significant donor so that when we go out to talk to others, they see that this is really gonna happen. And so some of the first people that came to our um, assistance to come to our call were Pat and Charlene Neal, who made a wonderful gift towards our flex fields. And we also had the Deerbrook Charitable Trust, who came in as a significant donor, not wanting to do it for their own namesake, but in honor of Mr. Carl Weeks, who, as many people know, was a, a fixture in the Boys and Girls Club movement for over 40 years. So they were some of the first people to come on board. Senator Galvano went to the state and was able to appropriate a million dollars towards the project, which was very significant as well. And from there, we started talking to our board leadership, to other community members. And before you know it, in just over two years, we had just over seven and a half million dollars. Well, I could probably talk to you for a half hour about all the features of this club and then some. But one of the things I want to talk about is the collaboration that took place. We used a design-build model for this project. So we had Ugardi Architects with NDC Construction and ZNS Engineering as our team to get everything started. And one of the things we figured out very early on was that the costs were going quite up from what we had initially thought. We had initially gauged about six million dollars towards the building and one and a half million dollars towards our endowment to sustain the operations. And what we found through the design phase was that it was going to cost closer to eight million dollars to build this facility and do it right. 
What was really cool about that is we talked to some financing partners, including Synovus Bank, PNC Bank, and Florida Community Loan Fund, and we were able to leverage our funding from our donors with the New Market Tax Credit Project. In fact, we are featured with the New Market Tax Credit Coalition, and we're able to see our project on the front page of their annual report, which is based on 400 plus projects across the United States. So Boys and Girls Club made it to the front page of that publication and it was just a great way to leverage a different additional resources so we ended up with about two million dollars in leveraged tax credits to put into the building. Yeah, you know, when you go through the building and you see some of the features one of the things that you'll notice right away from the outside is how big it is. This is a 37,500 square foot facility and it has two entrances, one for our younger members from kindergarten up until middle school and a separate entrance for our high schoolers and our teen program. The teens have their own separate area. It's great. They love it. They don't have to worry about younger brothers and sisters kind of annoying them when they're here. They get their own space. But we even set up a space for preteens. So if you think about when you were about 11 or 12, if you had younger brothers and sisters, yeah, you kind of wanted your own space then too. So in our old club, we actually had a, um, a portable building out behind the club for our preteens and they love that space. In the new club, they have their own lounge, they have a separate area for an activity room and it's just a, a much better space for everybody involved. In the past, we had a waiting list for kids that wanted to come to our club. And with this new building, we can almost triple the number of kids that we can serve, up to 600 kids a day that could come to this new club. And we're in a great position in terms of location because we've got the high school, as you mentioned, right across the street. We've got our elementary school just a little bit further down the road and a middle school, all within a very short distance. Not to mention that within a five mile radius, there are almost 20,000 kids under the age of 18. So this is a perfect neighborhood location for kids that can walk here, as well as kids that get bussed in from local schools. It's very convenient for parents because they can just drop right by and pick them up and they don't have to worry about them. They have a safe place to be after school. They'll have a great facility to be in in the summertime as well. And it's just a, an asset that continues to grow and to um, reach out in our community. We actually just started a new program with Easter Seals. Easter Seals is hosting their teen high school vocational program here at the club. And they actually started on August 12th when school started and used portions of our teen center and our gym and our cafeteria. It's been a great partnership because they needed space for their teens. They have 53 that are enrolled here currently. And right about the time that they get out of school is when club starts. So it's an awesome way to use this building, not just for Boys and Girls Club mission, but for other community groups that have a need. And when we have the availability of space, we wanna be able to partner together and make that happen. I really want to thank everyone from, their, from the bottom of my heart for their investment in our kids. As you might imagine, kids today have many distractions and many things that are heavy on their, their shoulders. And what the clubs are providing to them every day is not just the safe space to be, but a place to do their homework a place to learn how to grow socially and emotionally and to be great citizens of our community. And for generations to come, this club will serve our community well because of your investment. We encourage people to come see it in person. When you drive by here, you just have no idea what happens inside and it, it's pretty magical. And I think once you see it, you'll realize that what you've made an investment in is something that will have impacts for generations to come. We encourage you to get involved. We have openings for staff, we have openings for volunteers, and certainly we always have openings for more support as we continue to serve hundreds of kids in our community at this one facility. All right, in 1975, I walked into the DeSoto Boys Club at the time, and uh, obviously it's to my right, to the, to the west of us here, and that club was just a shell of what it is today, and then in 1979, that club was 
renovated to add the game room and all the classrooms in that. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. So getting to this day as an adult and seeing the excitement in these kids' faces is very exciting. And as we go through this, um, Carl Weeks and I have already been through the old club and looked at some history of some things that, that uh, really meant something to him and I more personally than anything else. But um, I always said that the day when that club's torn down will be a very happy day. You know, bittersweet, but very happy because of what we're getting for the, the future of the, this neighborhood and these kids in this community. I really do believe that when you put in a, a staple in a community, as the Boys and Girls Club is, it transforms the opportunity for a neighborhood to continue to grow. And it's not just the, the kids that will be coming in here, it makes the pride of the neighborhood build up. And you know, every area has opportunities to do things, and I think with all of the partnerships that have come together to build this club, through the county, the cities, the anybody that's involved, the, the local donors, the state, everyone has really done a great job to really say, hey, we believe in this community and how do we make it go forward? And, and again, it's about the kids. The walls will be there, but the kids that come through this and the staff that's there, and the, you know, I remember more than anything is the staff as, as an eight-year-old kid coming in. And you know, it's, it's those relationships that will make the difference for these children that come through this club. Well, I think when you look at it, the opportunity is there. And, you know, one of the biggest things is, and when we were kids, you go in the gym, you didn't think about no air condition. Nowadays, kids think about air condition and they want to be there. But the size of the club will allow this organization through a lot of time to serve three times as many kids as it was serving. And that's the benefit. Also, it'll allow to serve the community in different opportunities. You know, it's got a, a commercial kitchen type. It, it's going to give opportunity for more things to happen. And, you know, just during the day, the club will be utilized for other events and clubs that are uh, organizations that can utilize it, which is a win-win because now instead of just being used after school, it could actually be used seven days a week for a lot of events that actually builds community spirit. Well, I think one of the biggest things for the kids is it's a safe place to go. You know, nobody ever knows what a child's situation is. When you're looking at whether home life, whether school life, whether it's, you know, just anything in the community, the support that they need, this is an opportunity to have a positive place to go to, also to have a, you know, just basically a safe place. You know, and I mean, obviously, as you look through the club, when you go in, you see that a lot of things are different in our communities and, and the tragedies we see in our world at schools and different things. This gives them someplace they feel safe and secure, as well as you can get homework help, you can get, or just have fun, play pool, play ping pong, play in the gym. It's just a positive place to be, and that's the most important thing that I think any of us as adults now can give back to our community is that positive place. Well, and, and it's one of those things, as that club kid 40-some years ago, almost coming up on uh, 45 years ago, that when I walked in that club, I didn't know how it would change my life. And, you know, I've said this many times, without the club, I wouldn't be able to be the, the father, the husband, the community person, the just overall, I wouldn't be able to be on the city council. The club changed my life, and I want to thank the community for making this opportunity available to hundreds and thousands of tens of thousands of more kids for the future. Well, when I was selected, I was very surprised because it was um, a very good competition. We had to write many essays and had to memorize a speech. And I am not very good with memorizing or public speaking, so when I conquered my fears and actually won, I was very happy and I was very proud to represent youth all around. Um, honestly, it changed me because it got me out of being like such an introvert and being more social and being more interactive with my peers and conquering fears like public speaking and teaching me about teamwork and being a leader. I say join literally sign up you will have many new experiences you can volunteer you're gonna help your community and like they have different clubs like Keystone Junior Torch Torch Club and those are all volunteering and leadership opportunities and I strongly encourage it
this new facility. I love it. The air conditioning for one. <laughs> and the club when the kids first like the first day on the nineteenth when the clips got off the bus. They were so excited and they were like, oh my gosh, this new club. And they love the holes in the wall, especially. I think it's pretty cool. I feel like it causes less stress for the front desk at the main building. And it also gets the teens a little feel of independence and not being surrounded by the little kids all the time. The most important thing I learned was to accept yourself for who you are and don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in and finding your voice. I'm overwhelmed. It is so spectacular. You know, we started working on this project 20 something years ago when we knew the old club next door was deteriorating and we needed something to satisfy and, and provide a service for all you young ladies and men here in, in Manatee County. And look what we have today. I mean, this is just a exciting, glorious day for Manatee County. I think the big thing here is, is it allows them when they get out of school to come to a place where they can learn, they can, you can sit there and you can play some sports, you can do your homework, you can get some tutoring if you're struggling in school, it, it keeps you off the streets. It's air conditioned, what can be better than that in Florida? You know, and, and it's, you know, bright colors, you can, you know, expel a lot of your energy. So when you go home at night with your parents, you're going to go right to bed, eat your dinner. You know, I mean, what can be better than that? I was involved in the, in the boys club up in Massachusetts when I was probably you all's age. You know, and it's just a great place to make friends, develop social skills, you know, sit there and you'll know some of your friends here for the rest of your life. You, there'll be role models for you. You know, some of the instructors here are role models that will make you a better citizen. And it will sit there and, and, and get, put you on a path of success as you get older in life. I don't think you can ever underestimate the generosity of Manatee County. You know, when, when the going gets tough, they step up, you know, and they sit there and they open their wallets and their checkbooks and they know what's right. They know that you all are the future of this county. You're the ones that are going to probably ultimately take care of people like myself and Mr. Clapstaddle, <laughs> you know. So, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, you know, it speaks volumes to this county that we're a generous county and we believe in the youth. We believe in you kids, you know, that are going to sit there and grow up and, and be responsible adults and, you know, ultimately probably have families of your own at, at some point. And this is what, you know, makes Manatee County such a unique, great place to live. We, we love, love the Boys and Girls, Girls Club. Club. Oh, it's so important for our kids, for our community. You see these smiling kids enjoying, and they're not on the street. They're having good you know, examples to follow. Uh, they're learning about education and how to be good citizens and having fun. And I think uh, the, the fun part to me uh, is great because when I was a kid, I think I learned the most by having fun, playing games, and how to uh, work with other kids and doing things. And that's what boys clubs and girls clubs are about. Well, I'm, I'm going to just say for the school board, uh, the Boys and Girls Club is a great partner and the school board enjoys working with them uh, to, to make this a better community and for you know, the, the success that it has over the years and all those who have come to support it and work with it like the school board. Well, uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club is a great partner you know, with the school board. We, we like to be a great partner with them and uh, having activities and, and busing and all of that. It, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to work with them. Uh, happy kids are happy school board members and we're, we're trying to um, enlarge our presence with them and with the Boys and Girls Club. I think I'm going to be asked to leave here in a moment to go over the ribbon cutting, but uh, thank you very much for uh, being here and helping the uh, community know what a great job the Boys and Girls Club is doing.
this is a dream come true. I think we have been planning for this day for as long as I can remember. And to have a new and beautiful club like this club for the hundreds of kids that come here, this is just beyond words. I couldn't be happier, yes. Great day. Oh, you know it, Charles. We see it over and over again. This community is so connected and everybody helps everybody else. Whether you're a corporation or a nonprofit, government, we all are arm in arm and especially when it comes to the children. You know, we always talk about placemaking, right? And to have the Boys and Girls Club, a nationally recognized successful model right here in the Bayshore area, it is fantastic. And right across from Bayshore High School, I mean, this is a dream come true, Charles, really. The Boys and Girls Club offers um, after school care at the highest degree. You know, they are helping these kids with their homework. They are helping kids with every fundamental need that they have. And so I am so proud that they are right here in the Bayshore area. And everybody in Manatee County, but especially Bayshore, should be very proud. Well, really, I mean, as you can see from the building one, it's just, it's beautiful. It's, it's a safe place for all of our kids here, our young people in the community to come, have a place that feels like their home. And it's just shows the, the dedication that the community has uh, to our young people here by providing such a, a gorgeous facility for them to come to use, to play in and feel safe. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. Really the, the outpouring of support from the community just unmatched. It wouldn't be possible without everybody coming together. So really, really neat to see and to actually have this physical monument to, to that dedication. I mean, really, it's 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 tough to describe the impact. Um, you know, it just just goes on and on and on uh, in the community. I mean, it, it really it's tough to measure here in, in one day because the it's really a generational um, change in things is, is really important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My, my father, Jim, actually is a perfect example of that. He was a club kid back in the late 60s and early 70s. And, um, you know, now he's in the world of politics, too, hopefully giving back to his community in the same way. Absolutely. Well, really, first thing I'd like to say is thank you. This is not uh, possible without all of the community coming together to make this happen. So come, come see the place. Come take a tour. Come check us out. Come join us on October 17th for the grand opening party. We'd love to see you here.